Thank you for joining us today for the virtual Sunday service with the Center for Creative Living. CCL, a charter of the Universal Church of the Master, has served and supported the spiritual needs of its community here in the Bay Area for over 20 years. They uh, finally, after they've waited and waited, and the, when the receptionist keeps looking at these, you know, hillbillies virtually, and finally they go in and talk to the president of the school and said, well, we we're wanting to make a, a donation. And he said, oh, my gosh, you don't want to do that. It's very, very expensive. And she said, well, but that's okay. We wanted to. And, and the husband said, well, how much does it start? How much is it? to start a university and he said it's a million dollars and the wife said oh is that all <laughs> <laughs> i thought it was expensive <laughs> and they, they came back and opened up and it was leland stanford jr farm right. when it first started right. and i but i love that story you know right. don't don't ever judge a book by its cover as it were Absolutely. and uh, my friend, you know, my, my friend Lee is Leland Stanford the th uh, the third, and someone said, "How can you be a third since there wasn't a junior?" And I said, "Because his uh, his his uh, Leland Stanford's brother mm -hmm. right. had a child, and they and that was the second, mm -hmm. and then uh, when." Uh, Lee came along and he was the third. So, but it was—I—I I, I heard a lot about the Stanford family from our wow. dear friend Lee, who's traveling all around the world right now. But, wow. uh, yeah. Are, are but we, I love that. Are we also? Are we also? Are we also aware that the money that went to Stanford was actually designated to do psychical research? No, yes, right. I didn't yes. know that. The—the right. the brother of Leland Stanford it was in Australia, and he's a psychic. And um, Leland was very impressed by what his brother had learned and knew. So he designated that money to go to psychical research to prove or disprove, and he thought it would be proven that there is such a thing as life after death. The money was um, taken by people who had a little more power and a little more moxie, and they turned it toward a university. There's still a chair for psychical research at Stanford, and it gets passed as a, as a, as a chair. If you're already a chair of a, of a department, they give that to you as a name so that you can be the chair of also psychical research, but nobody's doing anything with it. But that's what the money originally was supposed wow. to do. Wow. Yeah, yeah. All that they're missing, I mean, leave yeah. alone, all the things you're missing as far as the information. Mm -hmm. right? you never, unless you research it, you'll never know. Exactly. Yeah, go for it. Hey, Don, what was that, that person they wanted to send to you to study when they found out that you were psychic? I don't know. Yes. Oh, I it remember. was uh, the one yes. in the Midwest? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody else knows where you're going. But I know, I know. This happens to me all the time. <laughs> I know. I, 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 you know, I, they, they did have the uh, mm -hmm. that one psychic one. research mm -hmm. team yeah. there. Was, that did the uh, military. Oh. Um, was that the ARE? No, not ARE. At, at Stanford. Okay. You know, uh, I can't think of the name of it right now. But they, they did a lot of stuff. I'll think of it later. <laughs> well, they've done good things with Stanford's money, but it was originally sent from, by Stanford to do psychical research. That was the whole reason for it. Yeah. That is it amazing. got used for everything else. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Yeah. So this is great. They are they doing the research? What's that? Are they not doing the research? What? They have a chair, but they don't do anything with it. So they're still not doing anything, so they have it on the books. They keep the chair because that's the original, in the original documentation, they had to be researching psychical stuff. So they put it uh, as a chair, but not actually much of anything is done. But not actually a department. No. Different Usually different. it's a chair of psychology or the chair of some other, organ, other part takes it as a secondary chair. That's great. Yeah. 
Well, this is the smallest group we've ever had, and well, yet the most powerful. Yes. You know, we can just right. feel that energy from up here. You yep. guys are fantastic. Small is beautiful. Thank you so much for being here. We really do appreciate it. And um, I want to talk about what's coming up. I'm going to be speaking next week on stand up for what you believe. I have so many people say, well, they believe such and such. Well, they're telling you what they believe because they want you to know that you, this is important to them. Yeah. And, and you know, don't say, oh, you can't believe that way. People believe the way they feel based on where they come from, who raised them, what's going on. Listen, all you have to do is say, oh, I've never heard that before. You know, and please honor it because if people stop standing up for what they believe, any country can be taken over. Mm -hmm. Any people can be taken over. Any religion can be taken over. And so what you want to do is stand up. And so that's what I'm going to be talking about next week, of ways that you can stand up for what you believe in. And I think that's been a lot of the women's movement. I was talking to a, a, a woman about my age, about the fact that we couldn't have a credit card, we couldn't have our own bank account, we couldn't buy property unless it was in our husband's name. And uh, we were discussing all of that, and I said, but the women stood up. And we forget that in our, in our time, in our lifetime, we have. And it just celebrating June 10th, Juneteenth, mm -hmm. it's there again, people standing up. So please, I'd uh, love to see as many people as possible next week so we can talk about standing up and living more boldly and trusting what spirit is telling you you should be doing, okay? Um, the, this is a, such a, a, a cute program. If uh, When you get a chance, uh, Corky wrote down some really bad jokes that are fun, and uh, <laughs> I want you to do that. Uh, we also have a birthday today. Our wonderful Ed is having a birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What? I'm going to prank you. I want the beads now. You, want, <laughs> you told me you didn't want any beads. What do you not understand Ed was pranking you? <laughs> You've converted me. I, I'm here to celebrate. Okay, you're here to celebrate. <laughs> Yay! Yay! Okay, woohoo! Here's your beads. Okay. Okay, look at you got all these different colors. Oh, oh, purity. Okay. Purity. Matches. Okay. okay, are you ready? I love wow. It. Well, no, we still have my sister over here. Yeah, oh, yeah. There you go. So, beat up, babe. Oh, no, I beat it up last week. Yeah, she, oh. got, she beat, beat it, it last, last week. week okay. okay. This, this is your oh, right. birthday song. Oh, it is a very long time. Yay! System now? Well, not really, but uh, that's okay. I'll still be saying happy birthday every time I see you today. All right. <laughs> I'm all for people celebrating their birthdays, okay? So, okay. here, can you slide that right in there? Yeah, that's perfect. Uh, and we're, go we're going to, uh, do you want to stand there while Janet sings, or do you feel like sitting down next to me? I can sit on. You can do... We can do anything you want here. If you look, you look so stately there. I hate to move you, you know. <laughs> yeah. I think I'll sit over here. Okay, that sounds great. Come on by. And so what we're going to do is, I'm going to do a short prayer, and uh, in lieu of meditation, we have a presentation. Okay. So if you'd all just put your feet flat on the floor. Take a nice deep breath. And we want to say thank so much, all of you, for being here. And those of you who are seeing us through Zoom, we'd like to take a moment for you to just get grounded. And that's why we say put your feet flat on the floor. Feel the Earth's energy as it comes up through the floor floorboards. Up to you. Be nurtured by Mother Earth. And then, think of Source, Creator, God, coming down. And let these energies meet right in your heart. You are the most important person in your life. Honor it. 
Thank you so much, our wonderful Creator, for giving us all this day to honor your energy, to honor ourselves, and to thank Mother Earth for all she's put up with and is going through, knowing that life continues, joy continues, but most of all, our spirituality continues. And with that, and talk about life continuing, Janet has a song. so delighted. Hi, Lauren. Welcome. I'm, uh, we have a comfy chair over here. <laughs> We're trying to parcel out the comfy chairs. Uh, we're so excited to have our speaker today. Uh, Reverend John Simmons has been one of those people that 
Uh, I, at this point, have you been a member of UCM longer than anybody else? I don't know. Actually, I don't know that. Uh, you know, Corky's got to run for your money. Yeah, uh, uh, Father Lawrence uh, was her sponsor. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you, how long have you been a member of UCM? Oh, probably 45 years? Yeah, but he's over 50, though. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah Aaron Fitzgerald signed my healing certificate in 1964. Wow. And I've been studying since 59. Yeah, I came in under Bertie. Yeah, under Bertie, yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. These, these folks have been around for a long time. We really do appreciate having them here. Can't get rid of us. Oh. <laughs> well, that's, we like that, you oh, know? No. Yeah, yeah, we approve of it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so very much. And, uh, you know, I, I like what you're wearing today. You look so stylish. You well, look like you. what every reverend should look like. Well, I thought I should maybe put this on because, interestingly enough, I did a funeral last week, uh -huh. and this is what I wore at the funeral, and it was hanging in front of me when I got up this morning. I said, well, why don't I just wear it? So right. I did. Aww. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I, oh, my voice is soft, isn't it? Well, I'm glad you didn't do a new uh, memorial. You <laughs> that know? was the other choice. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I thought there probably won't be many people there, so why show off? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And one of we, these days, we're going to have to meet that wife of yours. She almost came today, but she got a 30% off on something. So. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, that, 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 that makes sense. She had to go. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it was, it was, a, it, was a, it was the best deal in town. The best deal in town. That's right. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad that she got that. But one of these days, I know there's a, a Mrs. Simmons uh, a year. There is. Yeah. 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 She's been hanging around with me for over 50 years, also. Yes. Wow. You know, I'm yeah. one of those guys that just stays with it. Yeah. <laughs> well, we appreciate that. And before you start with your service, could you tell us a little bit about your background and being a nurse and um, in doing medical care for people? Um, <clears throat> well, I could tell you, how, how much time do we have? Right now, we have a lot of time, oh, okay. you know. In that case, settle back, relax, <laughs> get something to drink, and we'll talk. <laughs> Let's see, um, my parents uh, were, my mother was an brilliant astrologer, one of the best in the world. Uh, everyone wanted to study under her, including the Stanford professors. They were down in Mountain View all the time at our house, the, prof the math professors learning how to, you know. And so... Um, when we came from upstate New York, we'd gone to Lilydale, uh, and I come from a long line of psychics because a lot of the uh, the Irish and the you know all that group of people in that part of Europe tend to be very psychic, and it's accepted. And as my father told me when I was pretty young, probably five or six, I remember past lives. I remember where I was before I came here and how awful it was, but it, it was over, so it didn't bother me. And he said, you know, you don't talk about this outside the family, but inside the family, you can talk about it. So that was Great. good. Gave Great. me some direction. Oh, wonderful. Um, so we went to Lilydale and some of those. I saw some unbelievable things there that they could do psychically, uh, like passing a rose through a wall oh, wow. and pulling it out the other side and having it be in perfect shape. A British guy was doing that. So as a, about a six-year-old, a seven-year-old, I went up and I said to him, do it again. He <laughs> said, I don't do them twice. I said, oh, do it again. He said, no. My father said, do it again. <laughs> My son okay. wants it. <laughs> All right. He said, I'll do it again. So I stood right by the wall and watched him pass it through. Oh, wow. That's not possible. I said, how do you do that? He said, well, it's mostly space. We're all mostly space. There's a lot of room in between the parts of us, the molecules of us. So he said, if you just edge it through, you don't pick up any of those and you don't leave any behind. Wow. I don't get it. But anyway, that's, what, <laughs> that, that's the kind of thing that happened at Lilydale. Things that were not only physical proof, but also a lot, of, a lot of wonderful psychic learning. So we went to every religion there was. We've been in synagogues. We've been in minarets. We've been in just about anything because my mother and father thought, God was everywhere, so it didn't really make much difference. Right. So we came to M Mountain View. We went to Pearl's Church, Pearl Wilkinson. She was on 13th Street in, in San Jose. And I was impressed by what she said and did and by what was going on around her. So a few days later, I left my body in the middle of the night. About 9 o'clock at night, I was getting ready to go to sleep. I left my body and went to her bedroom. 
Wow. Now, I didn't know where she lived. I mean, I'd never even thought about it. And I'm standing at the foot of this big bed in a room that's got two lamps in it, not real bright. Percy, who was a very small man, opera singer, wonderful guy, but very small fellow, was over here and Pearl was over here. And I'm standing at the foot of the bed going, what am I doing here? I probably shouldn't be here. I'm a kid, you know, I don't, this is scary. So, so Percy turns around and sees me, he says, what are you doing here? I said, and before I could speak, he's coming toward me and I'm scared to death of him, you know, and I'm trying to get away from him. And Pearl turns and says, oh, she says, stop it, Percy, I know who he is. He was at church last, last Sunday. I said, yes, I was. She, <laughs> anything. <laughs> I'm not that bad. <laughs> It was scary for me because I was not in control. And so um, I said, I, she, she said, Percy said, well, why are you here? And Pearl said, I know why he's here. And I said, why am I here? <laughs> I didn't know why I was here either. And she said, because I'm going to be starting classes and you're there. You want to be one of my students. I said, yes, I do. Yes. And boom, I'm back in my bed. My only question is, what did I wear when I showed up? Because <laughs> I was in my underwear when I left. I don't know what I looked like when I ended up at their room because I didn't look at myself. But I was back in bed and, and shaking my head and going, what happened? So the next Sunday when Pearl was finished with her service, I went up to her and I said, what happened? She said, you came and I wanted to be a part of my class. And it's starting next week. You'll be my first student. <laughs> 1957. I'd like to see the reference on that one when you give, give a positive, you know, a, a statement. I, I came in the middle of the night. I didn't last so much, I just couldn't wait. Yeah. <laughs> so excuse me. That's yeah, so, great. So then I studied under her um, actively uh, every week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had some classes at night for a long time. Oh, oh louder? My yeah. voice is soft. Yes, yeah. <clears throat> I also have a little frog in Detroit. <laughs> Detroit, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> my, uh, I, <laughs> I studied uh, with her, and, and some of the things we did were, uh, for instance, a lot of people, a lot of men in particular, were coming back from the wars, and they had no legs and arms and stuff, and they didn't think they d had them, but they do, because in spirit you still are pure and complete, but you don't think you are because you remember losing it. You know? And so they would have to come and touch us and feel us and feel themselves and realize that they had two legs. And so you'd sit in a dark room with a group of people and you'd feel this something touching your face, you know. And the teachers would come in first and get us ready. And the room would light up when the teachers came in. It would be just like all the lights came on. And then it'd go dark when they left. And half the time I was falling asleep because I was in school, and, you know. And so I said to them, I, I sleep a lot. And they said, yeah, you're easier to work with your sleep. So go ahead. <laughs> you're, you're fine. You're fine. You're, you're fine. <laughs> your mind isn't going a mile. And so um, we did that for quite a while. She bought a tape recorder because the teachers would come in and give us a, a class before they brought the people in. And so when the teachers left, it all got real dark. And so... She bought a tape recorder and had a tape recorder on so she could tape record the teachers. And when we played it, it went shh, shh, shh. Wow. Never could get any sound. We all heard it. Everyone there heard the same thing but, and saw the same thing. But the tape recorder would not pick it up. Yeah. No. So anyway. Uh, um, different wavelengths completely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So then year after year, I went and Reverend Ferguson came in and he learned. I was a student with him and um, his uh, his good friends studied there, and a lot, of, a lot of people who are quite well known now did study with Pearl. Mm -hmm. and I was in all their classes. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. You're that. welcome. That Anytime. Wonderful. Yeah. So, well, Reverend John Simmons, are you ready to give a talk? I'll sit and talk all day, or I'll stand and talk all day, whichever you like. Um, I'm, oh, you asked me to talk a little bit about Father's Day. Right. So I, I did. I pulled a little bit of stuff together about okay. Father's Day. Great. Before I start with Father's Day, though, let me uh, mention I did bring some books. You may or may not have ever seen this book before. What is it? What's the name? It's yeah. called uh, Metaphysics Demystified, uh -huh. and it's by Grandma Janice. Grandma. Okay. Now, this is a woman I knew a long, long time ago in UCM, mm -hmm. and she wrote this book, or Grandma Janice wrote this book through her, I guess. Uh, it's quite amazing. It's got a lot of stuff in it. It's like, it's like filled with information, and she passed away. Uh, but before she passed away, she came to see me and said, I have books for you. I want you to give these books out 
sometime in the future, whenever you can. And if anybody wants it, they can have it for free, of course. Uh, and in the book are, is some of the, some of the book was actually written by Reverend Fitzgerald. Oh, wow. Back in 19, between 35 and 50, somewhere in there. I don't know exactly what it was written. So I brought some. If you'd like them, you can have them. If you don't want to take them, that's okay. I know there's been a little kerfuffle about books in the church, so I didn't want to create a more, more of a kerfuffle. So whatever is not there, I'll take back. Okay, <laughs> you know, well, whatever. please. Yeah. Uh, uh, We're grateful. And so they're sitting on that table in the, bo in the yeah, box? Yeah, they're in the box. Okay, great. Yeah. Quietly Thank you waiting so for much. anyone who wants them. Okay. I have found a lot of information. I, have, I haven't read the whole thing, but I've read parts of it, and it's always good. So Great. if you're interested, Thank you so much. Do. What a wonderful yeah. gift. My pleasure. My, and it's actually not from me. It's from Grandma Janice. Okay. I can't remember how long ago she passed away, maybe 25 years ago, something like that. And uh, Ed, how could we show? Can the people see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me zoom in. Yeah. It's Cosmic Map Meta Metaphysics Demystified. Okay. There it goes, mm -hmm. yeah. And so are you going to leave a few with us? Mm -hmm. okay. Well, I won't leave any because of the uh, issues. <laughs> oh, I was just going to put them here so they were just right here. So. Oh, okay, well, I can leave them if you'd like. Yeah. That uh, would be great. Okay. I will. Okay. Thank you and so if you very get, much. If, if you want to get them, give them back. If they want to get rid of them, give them back to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, wonderful. Well, good morning. We're going to talk a little bit about Father's Day, which I think is a uh, kind of not even necessary right now because we're talking about also so many good things. <laughs> but this is our excuse for getting together, other than naturally on Sunday, getting together anyway. Um, the first person to call God Father uh, was, of course, Moses in Deuteronomy 32.6. God being Father depicts the unique and personal relationship of God to each one of us and to his people. That's Corinthians 8.6. Jesus called God Abba, or Father, in Mark 14.6. Now, I'd like you to be thinking about what some words are that relate to Father's Day, because I'll write those down and, and we'll talk about them. So I'll, I'll, I'll do that in a few minutes. Many scriptural writings in the Bible refer to us as being the children of God. And children, of course, have to have fathers. Now, I have a problem with that because I call God, I refer to God as Mother, Father God, or Father, Mother God. I always do. And because to me, God has the attributes of both. God doesn't have to reproduce, so you don't need a mother, father, but still he has the attributes or she has the attributes of of both in my book, but I couldn't find anywhere in the Bible where they refer to mother, father, God. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe because of the ancient times, I don't know, but it seems to me people with wisdom would see that, wouldn't they? I mean, logically, it seems like, mm -hmm. but I couldn't find any place. Um, many scriptural writings in the Bible refer to uh, us being the children of God and God as being our father. Romans 8.15 refers to us as children of God and reaffirms that God, or Abba, is the Father. We are heirs to heaven through God. We are adopted sons and daughters, none of us alone, but all of us have many brothers and sisters, all united to a God through Christ. That's what the Bible helps us to understand, that that's our connection through Christ to be also the adopted Anyone. You could put it that way, adopted children. So there's a lot I don't know in this area because it seems kind of difficult to think it through. So I do have a habit of praying both to God as Mother, Father, God. Uh, I'm comfortable thinking of God as both Mother and Father. Let's look at what Father's Day might mean to you and to me. What does it mean to you? What words come to mind when you think of what Father's Day means to you? I'll write them down, and then we'll take a moment and look at them in a few minutes. So, when it comes to Mother, Father, God, well, I can't say that, can I? <laughs> when it comes to God, um, I'd like you to tell me what, uh, what words uh, um, come to mind when you think of Father's Day. What, what comes to mind when you think of Father's Day? Well, you know, you have, with God, you have the God that, 
gives you life and the God that kills you. I mean, you have, you have your flood father and you have your rainbow father. Uh-huh. So, you know, which one? I mean, and, and, and fathers are both. You know, the, the, um, the military and the, and the, um, and, uh, you know, they, they okay. usually are the ones that do the punishment and that sort of thing. You know, it's it's interesting. You don't usually think of your mother as being the the punishing person. You think of your father as being the one that does that. So what what um, what he gives you life? What else does father do in your in your book in your mind? Protection. Protect. What's that? Protect. Protect. Uh huh. Makes pretty good martinis. <laughs> what? Makes pretty good martinis. In my <laughs> I still missed it. Very good martinis. Martinis. Okay, hold on. Let me get that. <laughs> <laughs> My mother had married five times. So okay. Well, I'll drink to that. Okay. Pro- pro- provider. Provider. Yes. Supporter. Yeah. yeah. He, he was our constant. He always responded to every experience the same way with care and love and, and a great deal of authority. So I'm just going to interrupt for a moment. Yeah. If you have a lot to say, and it's great. Can you come sit here? Because <laughs> it's not picking up the Zoomers. are <laughs> okay. frustrated. Uh, that. Teacher. Teacher, yes. Punisher. Yeah, right. Source. What? Source. Source. What is it? Source. 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 All right. Right. (laughs) Okay, those are all very powerful words and very much a part of the, of the, what kind of masculine energy that, uh, that we see that comes with father. My, my father fathered lots of children. Your father fathered lots of children? Mm-hmm. How did he do that? Don't explain <laughs> it. <laughs> we don't need the details, but how did that happen? <laughs> he, he was, <laughs> That's true. <laughs> he was married five times. That would do it. Yeah. That would yeah, do it. So. Yeah. Connector. <laughs> but he was also an adulterer, so. <laughs> but he got around, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was teaching a class on sexuality one day for doctors, nurses, social workers, nutritionists, all that gang. And before the class started, four nuns in their habits came in and sat in the middle of the room. It was a class on sexuality. Mm-hmm. I was getting ready to start the class when one of the students in the back raised his hand and said, Teacher, um, are you aware there are some people in this world who do not have sex? And you're teaching a class on sexuality, but are you aware that there are some who don't have sex? I said, no, I, I think everyone has, has sexual experiences. He said, you think everyone does? I said, yeah. He said, have you noticed who's sitting in the middle of the room? I said, yeah, there's four nuns. He said, yeah. He said, how do you explain that? (laughs) I said, well, I won't expect them to explain it because I'll go ahead and explain it for them. We can have the intensity of the love and energy that just brings the best and deepest of us out at times, which is sometimes called orgasmic experience spiritually. We don't have to have it only with the body. We can have it with the body and the spirit at the same time, if we truly, truly love. The four went. (laughs) (laughs) I said, so we'll continue the class. And they stayed through the whole class. I asked them at the end of the class, why were they? (laughs) Why were you you here? I mean, you're welcome, of course, but what brought you here? He said, she said, the Reverend Mother told us to be here because we need the information. So be it. (laughs) Yes. I just wanted to mention, um, someone said source. In my mind, when I think of source, 
I don't think strictly male, I, though there's the male aspect, but I believe there's the female aspect and there's the uh, non-binary, non-gender, or other gendered aspects, and it's all a part of it. And I, I just suddenly felt like, you know, because source is such an all-inclusive term, that it's important to remember that it, that it is all-inclusive. Though today we're just talking about the uh, fatherly aspect. Of right. Totally, I totally agree. That's why I have a very hard time not saying to God, not calling God mother, father. I, I, I really have a difficult time just saying father, even though the Bible over and over says father, 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 father. Uh, it, it is hard for me, but I guess the understanding in the Bible is that father is everything and, and encompasses the mother as well somehow. I'm not sure how that works. I never figured it out yet. <laughs> What's, what's you say that human, I mean human. So, and yeah, right. Yeah, animals, human, everything in existence that I know of has the male and female energy separately, mm -hmm. more or less separately. But God, I think, has an amalgamation of both fully and completely. So why couldn't we say Mother, Father, God? But there's nowhere in the Bible that says that at all. It says Father, God, Father. So I was looking. But I don't think any of the writings do. The old writings don't. Right. No, they don't. And I guess, I don't know why. Yeah. I don't know. That's because it was written by men because women That's weren't right. taught to write. But wouldn't the men know they had mothers? I, I, that's a good <laughs> question. <laughs> good <laughs> question. Yes, Chris. But they could be recognized. Yes. Um, if I could just add. Yes, please. In Jewish tradition. Yes. There's the Shekhinah, which is the female energy. Of right. Go ahead and do that. Yes. And you can sit right yeah. there and that mic is hot. Perfect. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, I was not expecting to speak, but let's just put this in here that good. From what I understand from the Jewish tradition, you have Shekhinah, which is the female, I'm going to say the female face of God, and someone's going to say that's not it, but it's basically the female aspect. Mm -hmm. And also, in, in the most deepest prayer to God, we say Avinu Malkinu, but then this is the, the our father, our king. But there's also our mother, our queen. Yes. There's a wonderful balance that is written and is practiced. Um, I don't know what happened when we went from Judeo to Christian. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got. But our roots do have a good balance. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's and good. We have the goddess energy. What's that? Uh, but we have the goddess energy, but there's not much written that is as ancient as the things that uh, right. Chris and you are talking about yeah. that we that were was brought forward. Yeah. Yeah. That somehow got left back or got left right, out or right. somehow. Says, I, I think they. I think it got erased as much as the losers of every war. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you get forgotten, huh? God, yeah. You get forgotten, yeah. yeah. And women have been losing a lot over yeah. the centuries. So he who writes the books or she who writes the books gets to sell their... Right. Exactly, sell, uh, yes. Okay. Well, there's a lot to that. I'm sure that's right. Well, that's changing now, so that's a good, good yeah. news. I'm hoping that um, when Christ comes back, he can explain this to me better. <laughs> I'm a little mixed up on this. <laughs> over 195 countries are in the world. And only 50 or so actually celebrate Father's or Mother's Day. Right. Either one. Interesting. I thought all of them did one way or another, but no, only about 50 in my research. Um, about 111 of them do have some kind of a day off <laughs> for, uh, for something having to do with family. So some of them are Grandparents' Day, Children's Day, Siblings' Day, Workers' Day. Uh, Soviet Union and some of those countries, Workers' Day, or just Family Day, or even, for some countries, Deceased Family Day in Buddhist or Hindu cultures. Yeah. Ancestor Day. Isn't that interesting? Deceased Family. And as we know, in the uh, Hispanic countries, they sometimes have Day of the Dead, right? It's a holiday. Yeah. So that's recognizing mother and father, but uh, not just one or the other. Of the countries celebrating Mother or Father's Day, um, most have just started doing that in the last 100 years or less, 50 years for most of them. So it wasn't something that was recognized in antiquity. You know, in the old days, they didn't do this. It was all one way. 
Um, but there wasn't even a Father's Day in those. It is interesting that the Franciscan order of the Catholic Church has been celebrating a, a kind of Father's Day, a day of recognition for father energy since the 14th century. It usually gets focused on the priest as being the representative of the father. That's how it usually, but it's still a Father's Day recognition. In the United States, Father's Day was founded, would you like to hear this? By a woman. Mm -hmm. Father's Day in America was founded by a woman named Sonara Smart Dodd in 1910 in Washington State. She was raised along with five brothers by her father with no mother. And so she went to the trouble of going to the Spokane Ministerial Association and said, you need to celebrate. You need to celebrate this, this day. Father's Day. The celebration quickly became nationwide. Now, Mother's Day had actually been celebrated a few years before, but it wasn't until 1908 that Mother's Day was even recognized in the United States. So it kind of followed up on the heels of Mother's Day. Kind of the other way around. <laughs> For most people, our mother's role in life is very clear. She's the one who brought us into the world. She's the one we cling to when we're in time of danger. In threatening situations, most of us call out for our mother. In warfare, when men are injured or dying, they call out for their mother. I've never heard of cases, there might have been some, in which they call out for their father. <laughs> they call for mom. Why don't we men or women call for a father? I don't know. I've often wondered. I do personally know that having worked very closely with mentally ill much of my life, I'm a psychiatric nurse as well, and I've worked in psychiatry since 1961. Um, that many women, when they're feeling endangered, in fact, the majority will group. Women group together. When they're scared about something, they, they all group together. Um, a group of women is a safe place for the member of the group, and women under stress will find their stress lessened when they're grouping. However, with men, it's the other way around. When I'm working with psychotic men and I try to get them to group, it doesn't work. Oh yeah, I don't know why, but that's the way it works. When men feel danger and are under great stress, they separate, they go their own way. They solve their own problem, they don't listen to you. Uh, so two different ways of looking at, at danger and dealing with danger. So women rely on each other, and men tend to not. They tend to do independent action. In most cultures, the father in our lives expects us to face problems without much outside help, to be strong, independent, and even aggressive in problem solving. Your father most likely tried to teach you to solve problems independently. Rely on yourself. Be strong. Be focused. Be self-reliant. Trust your instincts. Act independently to problems. What is the ideal dad? Who is the ideal dad? Here are some thoughts that I thought of, and I'll, I'll also list some of yours that you've gave, given me today. Uh, he's here for you. He gives you freedom to try and sometimes fail. He's already always ready to pick you up if you fall down. If you fail, he'll help and allow you to try again. That ideal dad, no, not... Not the typical dad, <laughs> necessarily, but the ideal dad. Okay, listens and encourages you to do, your, do it your way. That's the male side, do it your way, right? Don't do it as a group, do it your way. Flexible, wants you to try to problem solve creati creatively. Gives time and resources freely so you can succeed. Willing to hear your goals and assist you in your attaining your goals. Strong, caring, giving, loving, gentle, but firm. Protective, ensuring your safety. Some of the uh, lists that you gave me when I asked you to pick a word regarding dad. Gives life, protects. I'll read these and I'll turn them over. Mar martinis. <laughs> 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 I won't try to explain that one. Uh, <laughs> provider, supporter, uh, constant, consistent, teacher, punisher, and source. Those were what you wrote here. 
which goes quite well with what I found in researching it. I guess that our time is almost up for today, but there have been some recent books that uh, uh, are good, and I don't want to add to your stress, so those books are in the back, as I said earlier. So, comments. What do you think? Father's Day. Day of celebration of someone who encourages us to think on our own and get out there and do it and have the courage to do it. Yes, go ahead. So I would just like to honor what Ruth Renat was saying earlier and how I found that people, whatever their gender, yeah. or if they're not identifying as a specific gender, can right. have some of these qualities. So I have a tendency to honor more people that are not of the male gender on Father's Day, actually. Sure. Because they carry that that um, energy protection. So, you know, I would just offer that, you know, we think of all of that as being something to celebrate. Sure. And also, my father was very nurturing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, I would go to my father sometimes when I was really hurting. Sure. And finding out, actually, that he was the one that was able to see me in the, I guess he was a medic in World War II. Okay. So he was able to see me in the, when I was in the incubator, and back in the day when I was in the incubator for almost a year, wow. he was the one that saw me. He was the one that was able to get in and be with me. My mother was not allowed. No. So that the whole process of, mm -hmm. you know, I think we do a lot to separate father and mother. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times if we could just integrate it all. Mm -hmm. I agree. As being, this is a person. These are the qualities of a person. Yes. That we can carry. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm in a male body, but I'm half female and half male, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to be nurturing to be in nursing, and I was when I went in, but I got more nurturing as I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Other comments to, to add to the talk? Yes, please. Why don't you just sit up here? <laughs> I heard something <clears throat> really interesting, and it's possible it was many years ago at CCL, and it was um, it was a woman who was talking about um, um, pilots, and there's a, an automated program for pilots. Yes. Yeah. You know this one? Mm -hmm. It's an automated program for pilots, so you can correct me if I got this wrong. It was many years ago. And it's, pull up, pull up. That's basically the 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 caution and it's delivered in a woman's voice because pilots at the time being primarily male if it if by delivering it in a woman's voice i imagine it went to the absolute core it just went right in and it was instinctual to follow that You're and right. i think that You're right. that speaks to a little bit of what you were saying You're absolutely right uh, when a, when a man her, her, hears a woman's voice there to say pull up He'll respond to it and pull up. He'll hear the man's voice and say, I'm not taking that from you. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? So there's a lot, of, a lot of power in that. During the Second World War, when they found the B-29s were difficult planes to fly and could crash easily uh, if they weren't flown carefully, they had women test pilots. Great. Yes. <laughs> right, right. Well, it turned out the women are better pilots than men anyway. If you ever fly commercially and it's a woman pilot, be real happy because women are very good at following the directions precisely and not putting their emotional craziness into the picture. And men fall into that pretty easily when they get agitated or nervous or, or scared. So actually, female pilots are better pilots, statistically, if you look at what they've, what they've put together in the last 20 years of crashes and and plain ish problems, women come out way ahead on, than on men, actually, on that, interestingly. Other comments that you'd like to share? Anybody? It's a bit of a touchy subject in our, in our culture, isn't it, in our, in our world, because people get nervous about things. I don't see why they should. We're all in it together, and we're all both, actually, so why not just enjoy it?
Sounds good. I think that's a good. Yes. I think that's a great day. Well, that's yeah. all I have to say. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, John. Oh, I, I feel sorry for the people who weren't here today. I think this has been so wonderful <laughs> of hearing from you and uh, getting to know you better. Thank you. And uh, seeing, uh, you know, one of our, the sages of UCM here. Thank yes. You. Thank you so very much. Yeah. It's been yeah. wonderful. My pleasure. Okay, and were you going to do a closing prayer for us today, uh, Joan? I was going to collect money. Oh! Oh, <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> You're right. So before I do the closing prayer, so as you as you hold this, is, what I like is a two-step process. Please hold your offering in your hand and say, "I bless this gift." That multiplies for me and for everyone that it touches. And so it is. So it is. And, and now, Lauren, could you pass the basket? And then we're going to say the prayer on the program after we collect all the offering. And what I do is I prep it by putting my offering in before the service. It's like I'm, okay. I'm was it priming the pump? <laughs> okay, great. As I give, so I receive the energy of my heart. I bring it home. I let it go, and I sit in the arms of gratitude. We are grateful, we are here, we are grateful, we can be. Say this with me, please. Can you read it? Okay. Get a little closer. To the I give you thanks pray. for my, my spiritual, spiritual community. community. I, I live, live in, in a world, world of freedom and abundance. I am happy, happy to support, support my spiritual community. community. Thank, Thank you, Universal Spirit, Spirit for your everlasting love, love and support. support. And, and so, so it is. is. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And John, before we uh, before we lose you, could you tell us a little bit about the meditation group that you have? Oh yes. Um, You've got a mic right okay. here. Okay. Um, before we go, could you read the job so that everybody, the people on Zoom and stuff? Oh. Okay. <laughs> Did you hear about the two rowboats that got into an argument? It was an ordeal. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear about the cleaners who went to space? They ended up scrubbing the mission. <laughs> Why do turkeys play percussion? They have drumsticks. Oh no. I adopted a dog from a blacksmith. As soon as I brought him home, he made a bolt for the door. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Good job, thank you. Those are good. <laughs> Jokes are really good. Okay. You know, it's a gift to be simple, and I'm proud to be gifted. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what did you want me to do? <laughs> you have a meditation group. Is it open or is it yes, closed? Yes, you know, it's always open. Um, we, we do well, every the second Saturday at uh, noon, and uh, we do it online now. We used to do it at the house and have everybody there, uh, but then, of course, COVID and all the excitement, so now we do it online. So if you'd like your... Uh, email added to our, our list, I'd be glad to do that. And it's at noon. It's at noon on the second Saturday. 
Yeah. So uh, we have about, um, how about maybe 15, 16, 18 people, something like that. It's been going, this particular meditation group has been going since before Pearl, or before I knew Pearl. I think 1954 is when it started. Okay. And, it's, and it's been going every week, every week since then. Um, and, and this is every month, because I can't do it every week. She did it every week for a long, long time. But I decided every month I could do, so I cut it back a little bit. But it's been going and going since then. It's had a number of different leaders. Uh, as one leader passes on or, or can't do it any longer, somebody else steps up and just takes it and goes with it. And uh, when I joined it, Pearl was the leader at that time. But since that time, we've had five or six other leaders, and now I'm sort of the leader because it's kind of evolved to me. So what you could do, since everybody here is already on the mailing list, you could take the little yellow uh, statement that mm -hmm. you have and hand it to John, yeah. and he can put us on his wonderful meditation group. Yeah, your, okay? e your email address would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let us take a deep breath and just relax into spirit. We give thanks for this wonderful special meeting today, this wonderful special message, which goes out into the universe to embrace all fathers as we celebrate Father's Day. We have fathers who are fighting wars. We have fathers who are working hard. We have fathers who are praying for peace. And perhaps all these fathers are doing all these things because they multitask. We give thanks for the fathers as we go forward into this week. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day. This, and I'm saying, Father, on purpose. Father, Father God, the universe was with us always, who helps us, protects us, and, and gives us love. Thank you so much. And so Amen. it is. So Amen. It is. Amen. Thank, Thank you so much, Joan. Oh, that was wonderful. And as you can hear the rustling of the bags in the back, this is, uh, this is, today is our snack and chat, and uh, we have uh, all sorts of food being put out, and we want you all to please stay if you have some extra time. And John, can you stay for yes. a little bit oh, yes. and do yes, some talking yes, to people? And uh, you can pick his brains. <laughs> Bring a small pick. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, we have the chair set up there so you can gather around in groups. And we'd love to have you just stay for a while. We, this is a, a day that we keep a little bit longer. And uh, if you have any uh, questions, that's a time you can talk about them. And if you have any questions about UCM or questions about just about anything. I think we've seen that our wonderful Reverend John Simmons has answers for just about anything questions you might have. Yeah, please. Yeah. Of course. And so we love that. I don't know. I'll ask Spirit. Thank you yeah. so very much. And thank you. Thank you so My much. Pleasure. For being here. My pleasure. Okay, who's on Zoom today? That we're going to hear. There we go. We have Ann Corbin, Jen Lee, Christine St. Clair, Laura O, Patty and Joyce, and of course, Skye. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. And uh, thank you, Ed. Thank you so much for your help. Yes. Thank you for yes. having been born today. We really do appreciate it. Good for you. Thank I you. get a second chance. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll take it. It's so nice to have people here when it's their birthday. We really, really enjoy that. And uh, nothing like working on your birthday. Thank you That's so right. much for doing that. <laughs> and and uh, hopefully we'll see you next week. And um, please, uh, if any you want to help, you can help Corky and Arlene uh, uh, put out the food. Because there they are, working their little tails off, okay? Right. Thank you so very much for being Thank here. Thank you. Thank you. Don't forget to pick up your book yep, and there. the box back there. Yeah.